Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine and I'm doing a persuasive research speech on should people with chronic overweight issues pay more for health care. So this is the long outline, it's not going to be this long I promise, but it's basically everything that I'm going to go over talking about um, being overweight, overweight, whether it should be incorporated in health costs, what contributes to being obese, and so on. Okay, so my self-disclosure story. Anyone can be obese. When I was younger, I had a metabolism to the roof. I could eat what I wanted, I could be a couch potato, and I was a bean pole. <laughs> I gave birth to my son, um, and after I gave birth, I gained almost 100 pounds. It was ridiculous. Um, I was overweight, I was having a hard time with energy. I wasn't eating that much, but I was still gaining a lot of weight. I did everything right when I was pregnant. I was uh, skinnier than I was when I gave birth. I ate fruits and vegetables, I drank water, I went walking, I, I did everything I was supposed to do, and I maintained a great weight. I actually only gained seven pounds when I was pregnant, and my son came out at eight pounds and one ounce. So, how did I become obese? I ended up getting postpartum depression, horribly. I I didn't want to take care of my son. I would just watch him cry, and it, it hurt me because I loved him. I love kids. I got put on Zoloft, which is an antidepressant. I turned to alcohol. I was mixing alcohol with my antidepressants. Zoloft in itself can help you gain weight without, you know, you don't even have to eat much. Um, of course, I was having a lack of sleep. My baby was keeping me up at night. Um, the fastest thing to grab is burgers from McDonald's. That wasn't helping. So I ended up gaining weight. So the person that I spoke to about being obese and whether it should be incorporated in our healthcare costs was our UH Hilo professor, Stephanie Bossel. She was actually somebody that I had as a personal trainer at Penn's Fitness a few years ago and she was the one who inspired me to get into kinesiology and exercise science so it was really inspirational to be able to interview her. Some of the things we talked about, um, the contributors to obesity, it's not everyone's fault that they're obese. Genes play a heavy factor in it. The foods that are available to us, a lot of us are low income, a lot of us do have um, even though we have two or three jobs, we're supporting a family, and you can feed a family more with a meal from McDonald's than buying steak and potatoes, chicken, and vegetables, and it's hard. Um, she's a great inspiration because she has a lot of health issues. She has um, Crohn's disease, and she still competes. Um, I was really proud to see this online. I got a bunch of pictures from her, but she competed. Even though she had health issues, she prevails through that, and um, something that I wanted to really show to you folks that even if you're a little overweight or if it's in your genes, your parents were overweight, it's, it's not set in stone. You can change that. You just got to fight a little harder. It'll be worth it in the end. So she had also showed me a few of these graphs online. It's called the 12 graphs to being overweight. Um, and it shows you 12 different graphs of things that were interpreted or placed into our daily lives that ended up increasing the rate of obesity as those things increased. And of course, fast food. In 1889, most of the humans here, humans, people, <laughs> ate at home. So obesity was really low. As the number of fast food chains became more readily available, so did our obesity rate. So did the health rates, um, a lot of people being unhealthy, getting sick more often. Sugar consumption, everything has sugar in it. Everything is high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup isn't natural, so our bodies don't know how to break it down. It becomes immediately stored fat. So it's not like natural sugar where our body says, hey, energy, let's burn this off. It's something modified that our body's saying, I don't know what to do with it. Let's put it to the side, and it ends up on our hips and <laughs> everywhere else on our bodies. People are sleeping less. Everybody 
in this world is working. Everybody's trying to make a living. Everybody's trying to take care of their families. So everybody's getting less sleep. With the amount of sleep going down, our weight goes up. A lot of people don't realize that in the pyramid of being healthy, as I call it, sleep is actually one of the number one things to helping you maintain good weight, helping you keep your weight down. The more sleep you get, the more your body is able to recover from the day, it's able to metabolize things, and then comes diet, and then comes fitness. So if you get really good sleep, if you get really good diet, your weight can go down a lot faster than no sleep with just a lot of exercise and that's something that a lot of people don't realize another thing physical activity 20 percent and under for children in the united states so children who are 15 years and older when asked if they play sports if they do physical activity only 20 percent said yes 80 percent of kids aren't getting the physical activity that we were getting as kids they're not going outside and playing they're not they're not playing after school sports, they're not doing any of that stuff anymore. And you're seeing a lot of the youth overweight. Before it was after you graduate, you, you end up clumping up a little bit. But a lot of the kids in high school, in middle school, in elementary school, they're running around and they're these little chubby little butter balls. <laughs> and that's, that's not how it should be. They should still be metabolizing everything. And that's what I wanted to incorporate with this slide is the electronic activity. Almost 100% of kids say that they go on the computers every day. 100%, almost 100% as opposed to 20% who are going out and getting that physical activity. The electronic activity, internet, cell phones, um, game stations, all of those things, all you're doing is sitting down. Your body's not burning anything. You're not, you're not interacting with people. You're not moving your body. You're moving your thumbs, <laughs> and that's about it. And it's it's ridiculously sad so with this presentation I wanted to show you guys that I don't think it's anyone's real fault that they're overweight there's poor education on health and weight gain there's there's the prices of food that contributes contributes to it low-income families a lot of us have no other choice but to eat McDonald's. So it's not our fault we're trying to feed our families and the only thing we can feed our families is unhealthy food. Five dollars can get you five burgers to feed five of your family members or one salad to just feed one person. And sadly, it's it's not our fault. I think that people should be more educated. Um, try to get our kids, I mean, part of our kids being overweight is our fault. We gotta get our kids out of the, out of the room, out of the house play sports with them more. We have to stop just influencing them by being on our phones all the time. You know, get them out there, enjoy life a little bit more. So, to the question, should people with chronic overweight issues pay more for healthcare? Absolutely not. Again, educate people. I think that um, meal plans should be included in healthcare costs for people who are overweight, even for children, anyone 18 and under. You should get free health plans on what type of foods you should be eating, how often you should be eating, what type of foods, what time of the day is better to eat. Um, those type of things should be included in healthcare. They shouldn't be paying more. So, thank you very much, everybody. Good job. <laughs>